Well, the guy's way down in southern Kansas where we picked up this 1966 Oldsmobile F85. It hasn't been running in about 10 years, give or take. I'm gonna try to get this thing going and back on the road again. But of course, first we gotta walk around it, drink it up, and see what we're in for. I think I'm gonna start in the trunk, see if we got any, you know, engine parts or anything like that. Tells a good story. Great. This will be fun. Now immediately, you can see this has kind of been turned into a street strip car. It's got this crazy bowling ball paint and big snorkel and tires. So I'm a little nervous we're gonna find like head gaskets or something like that in here. Might be the reason it was parked. Oh, that's great. Found a gas tank. That's neat. So I'm gonna say we have a fuel issue right off the bat. So that's fine. Look at this paint. That's wild. Wow. They even did the underside of the thing. Well, let's jump inside the rig. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. It smells like a wristwatch full of earwax. It's, uh, it's really different. Two things I noticed immediately. We got some sort of cage in here. OK. Four speed. Yes, that is great news. This was definitely crudely cut in, so it was an automagical transmission to start with. Mileage, 8,945. Nope. We got a Gran Turismo wheel. I'm getting a 90s feel here. We got miscellaneous switches. We got a radiator laying in the back seat with a bunch of empty uh, wobble pop cans and a fire extinguisher. So the previous owner definitely Partied. I'm gonna tell you that. There's no ignition stick. So that's, you know, nothing new for Roadworthy. And I'm gonna have to move the seat if I'm even gonna sit in this thing. It's not Sasquatch size. And based on the radiator and fan shroud, I think we're gonna have a lot of work in the power barn and see what we got under there. Look at the bird eater on this thing. Goodness gracious. Yeah. You know, they used to be pretty cool. Not so much anymore, I guess. Yes! We got a big box. 455 probably. Ish, looking like, ish. Oh, we got a radiator and the fan and the belts and the whirly woos and, and all of that. It's got hot rod parts and then headers. It's got updated music pipes. I mean, all in all, it looks to be really complete. So this car is sitting in a tree roll from the guy that we bought it from. I want to try to get this thing running, driving off the property and down to a neighbor's shop. He's going to let us wrench in there. But I've got quite a bit of work to do to try to get this thing fired up. So I brought my brother, Sean, over, and he's going to be helping me out. How's it going? It's going. Big block. Big block. Four speed. Like that. Bowling ball. Uh, big tires. Tires. Yes. Yes. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to convince you to lay upside down and put an ignition in this, so we or wires or something to okay. do the starter. I'll figure out fuel and spark. We can meet in the middle, see if this rotates, see if we get this thing barked off. Sounds like a game plan. All right, let's get started. So in order to get this old ignition out, you gotta have a key to be able to turn the tumbler and depress the switch. Well, we don't have the key, so I'm gonna try to drill it out. Or just push it all the way through the dash. And then pry all the innards out and put a new tumbler in. No pain, no gain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Just keep doing it. Okay. What's happening in there? Crank it, see if it works. Barely. But it works. It works. Boy, she's drier than Bob Barker's skin. So this old 750 Edelbrox just been sitting too long. The needle stock and the squirters weren't squirting. So it's not gonna work. I'm gonna tear it down just see if I could throw a cheap rebuild kit in it. Save some money and just use this old guy here. 
Yeah, you really want to use a clean working surface when messing with your fuel metering device. This old fuel tank should do the trick. Definitely a calendar pose right here. More lips, more lips. Push your butt off. What? <laughs> I've never seen a rock actually make it through a carb. It's pretty impressive, actually. I'm not even mad. I'm gonna soak this thing down, toss this new kit in here, put it all back together, and then hopefully, as long as there's compression, this thing should bark right off and make some noise. Got a ladybug. Hang on, little feller. It's gonna be a ride. So here's where we're at. We're ready to fire this thing up, or at least attempt to. We've made a temporary fuel system out of the old snowmobile tank. Sean's got that wired in with an extension cord. We got a kill switch in the cabin, believe it or not. We've done a makeshift carburetor rebuild on this. We've tested, we've got spark. So theoretically, if I pull this trigger, it should fire off here and make some noise. You ready? Ready. Bring the thunders. <laughs> Nothing. Let's bring it again. Something doesn't sound good. No, sir. I think that's what you call a knock. The battery is plenty fine. Help! That didn't seem to work. Man, this is actually, might be really bad. Why else would they park a beautiful car like this? So we've got a very prominent knocking sound coming from the engine. It's like a cabin screen door. It's loud. It's loud. Yeah. Now it won't spin over at all. So we got a wrench on the crank. Oh, yeah. She's tight now. Yeah. So there's something going on. I got an idea, Sean. Whew. What if this thing is like 42 to 9 compression, theoretically? Yeah. Everything inside's brand new, lost the receipts. It makes. 3,000 horsepower. What if we pull all the sparkulators out, then try to spin it over? Get some lube around because in Because then if it's tight still, we know it's not compression, it's mechanical interference somewhere. Okay, plan. So I think what we're gonna do is try to hit a bird with five stones. Sean is gonna juice up all of the cylinders filled full of Marv Mar Marvel mystery oil. We don't know what's in it. It's a mystery. And while he's doing that, I'm gonna replace the sad cable on the battery because this thing's smoking like a bingo hall. And that way we know we've got a good ground. The starter's getting all the juices. We're gonna charge up the battery. We're gonna have lubrications. We're gonna try to spin it over again long enough to where we can start diagnosing where this knocking sound is coming from because it is, it's not going away. It's kind of like taxes. You know what I mean? Okay. That's better, right? Sure. It's this oil. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Yeah, you can hear it now. Oh my gosh, you could feel it in the pan big time. Water pump? Impeller or something weird in there? Well, why would you feel that in the pan? Is the fan on the alternator hitting the bracket? No. Is the crank hitting the timing tab? No. Could it be? The crank hitting the windage tray. I mean, even if it runs, we're gonna have to pull it. Can't run it like that. So now, do we rebuild it or do we find a 455 in a jet boat somewhere? It's not really jet boat season though. It's not. So we're still not ready, you know, to accept defeat. So we cut the belts off and we're wasting more time, hoping that something other that's rotating is making the noise. 
Probably not, but it's worth a shot. So if it still makes noise, it's crank engine related. Ready? Yes. Ready. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, That's all right. Good. Yeah. So anyway, did you bring any fishing poles? It'd be a good day to fish. Well, clearly the bowling ball Oldsmobile has some issues. We're not going to be able to resolve them up here on this hillside in this tree row. So I think what we're going to do is try to throw this on a trailer, get it over to that shop that we're going to borrow. We're going to have to pull this engine out and at least take a look at the thing, see how bad it is, do something. But nonetheless, off the hill it goes, into the shop it goes. 